Lovely faces, praise the Lord. Um, a warm welcome to those who are joining us online. It is my prayer that today the Lord will bless you, will speak a word into your life, and your life will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our God and King, we honor you once again this morning, as you have made it possible for us to gather here in the name of Jesus. I pray that, Lord, you will come and be amongst us this day, O Lord. I ask that the power of your Holy Spirit will be present in our midst, Lord. I pray that you will come and touch hearts, Lord, minds that are tired, hearts that are weary, Lord. Energize us, revive us, Lord God Almighty, as we come together to worship, to praise you as the one and only true God. We bless your holy name and we give you praise. I ask that everything that we will do here today will glorify your name and your name only. And therefore I declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that Satan has no authority here through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. 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 We will have our scripture reading. Uh, and I would like everybody to join in as we read, please. Three, two, one, let's go. And it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road, remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. For this is what the high and exalted one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lonely in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lonely and to revive the heart of the contrite. Amen? Amen. God lives in a high and holy place, but he has you in mind. Amen? Amen. So this morning, shall we all stand, please, and give this mighty God his praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Lord. It's great to be here to worship the Lord. Have we got things to be thankful for? Yes. Three of you have. Let's try again. Have you got things to be thankful for? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's praise him then, shall we? Praise him, you heaven. Praise him, you heaven, and all that's above. Praise him, you angels and heavenly hosts.
great in power. Great in power. Great in glory. Great in mercy. Bless your name, Lord. We worship you. We thank you for being thank here, Lord. We Jesus. thank you for providing all that we've needed, Lord, for another night. Amen. Lord, and here we are, breathing the air that you give us. We worship you. We praise you. Lord, you were there right from the beginning of creation. You always loved us, Lord, even before we appeared from our mother's wounds. Lord, we praise you. You were the word at the, the beginning. beginning.
What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Thank you, worship team. Okay, so a couple of notices. Um, well, it will interest you to know that EBC is among the top ten givers to Baptist uh, Missionary Society. So they are expect a clap, amen. Yes, so we pray that we will continue in that manner. Scripture declares that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So in giving of our substance to the work of the Lord, amen. And the Lord will surely bless you because he keeps his promises, amen. Okay, um, I will ask you to continue to pray and be thinking about nominations for the uh, upcoming diaconet elections. Uh, I think uh, it's in uh, oh, the autumn, you said. Yeah, there are five nominees. Okay, we have five uh, nominees and I'll be thinking and praying about them and as the Lord leads, come the day we will vote, okay? And I have been asked to appeal to us, those of us who are interested in helping to clean the sanctuary, uh, please uh, put your name down. There will be a sheet at the back in the foyer. After service, please write your name down, and uh, we will thank God for your life. Amen? Because we have, I've known people who have been doing this for years, and I believe that the Lord's blessing is upon them. A gentleman just gave a testimony some years back. He was just passing. He wasn't a member of the church. And he realized that, oh, these windows are dirty. So he volunteered to come and clean them. And if I want to start the testimony, the things that the Lord did in his life, I won't finish if you are here until whatever time. So it's a good place to start. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, today will be the um, Sunday Junior Church will be meeting. Today, we've had a lovely summer break, and today they will be going back to their uh, various uh, classes. The 13s, over 13s, will go upstairs with Pastor Isaac, and uh, Junior Church will have some Bibles to be handed over to them. So at this point, I'll call our sister Ingrid to come in and do that. Thank you, Ingrid. Good morning, Edmonton Baptist Church. Um, this morning, I'm here to actually um, do the annual um, handing out of youth Bibles. And as you know, um, we have all the children in the younger classes, but the children that are actually in my class, in Adventurers, they're actually going up now to um, Lower Discoverers, which is actually Elizabeth's class. So we always have the change of round, but this is a very annual thing that we do. At the start of the beginning of term, again, the ones that actually go up to Lower Discoveries are actually handed their own youth Bible. And so I'm going to ask now um, the following um, people. I'm not sure if they're all here, um, but the first one we have is Nashon. Is Nashon here today? Give him a round of applause. Have a long 
to Sean. Come and stand here. That's your Bible there. Okay. And it, it's actually such a pleasure for me. As I'm handing out these Bibles, it's like they're, own, they're my own children, and I'm actually letting them all go. So I'm going to miss him. <laughs> we also have Junior. Is Junior here? Come along, Junior. Give him a round of applause. Another one of my favourites. There you go. That's your vibe there. And we now have Christina. I've already seen you, Christina. Come along. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Make sure it is your Bible. It is. There you go, Christina. And we have Alexander. Is Alexander here? Or Alex, as we call him? Alexander? No Alexander today? Okay. He can get his Bible next time. Do we have Jaden? Is Jaden here this morning? Jaden. There you go, Jaden. Thank you. Okay, stand along there. And I'm not sure if I've missed anyone else out, but if I have, please forgive me. I will actually do another presentation um, next month. So what I want to do, I just want to actually pray for these young people as they actually go up. They're actually starting a new year in school as well. So if we could actually just take this time to pray for them. So we're praying for Jaden, we're praying for Junior, we're praying for Nashon, and we're praying for Christina. So let us pray. Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, we thank you for these young people, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to lead, guide, and direct them, Father, wherever they go, Father. Father God, I just thank you for their lives, and I thank you for their families' lives, Father. Father, I pray, Lord, that the words that you have imprinted on their hearts, Father, in all these years will not be void, will not go to vain, Father. I pray, Lord, that your light will continue to shine through them and on them, Father. So wherever they go, people will know whom they belong to, because they belong to you. They are yours, Father. So, Father God, I pray, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as they continue to grow and they continue to grow in your word and your word alone, Father. And Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise for these young people. And we pray, Lord, that they will be able to touch others in their lives. And Father, we pray that they will also never depart from you or your word. And this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And I'm just give them another round of applause. And I'm just going to go a little bit old school now. And we all, all the older generation here, like myself, remember the song that says, Jesus loves the little children. So I'm just going to sing that. And if you know it, sing it. One, two, three. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Give them another round of applause. Thank you so much, Ingrid. The children can now leave us. And as we wait for the children to go to their various uh, classes, we have a special guest among us. Okay, so like I said earlier, we have a, a visitor, well, a visitor, we've known her for some time now, and if you were here some few years back, you would have been blessed by her voice, her singing, and her testimony of God's great healing power, amen? So this morning, it is my honor 
to introduce to you Leticia to bless us with a testimony and a song. Let's welcome her with a song. She says she'd like me to help in translation. When I need it. Okay. Uh, I mean, sorry. Good morning, church, again. Uh, thank you, Pastor Stephen. Thank you for letting me have this time of sharing. Uh, how can I share something so unscriptable what I, I have been going through in three minutes? It's really hard. Um, since I since I was here uh, three years ago, several things kept happening with my health. And so this is where I want for my husband to translate so I can speak uh, on my pain Spanish. <laughs> okay. Yo pensé que la cosa se había terminado. I thought everything was done. Pero volvió otra vez esta bendita enfermedad. But this disease returned again. Cinco veces ya lo tuve. Five times. Y esto que tengo en el corazón es lo que he podido tejer dentro de la locura de mi cabeza en estos últimos tres años. And so these things that I have in my heart, it's what I've been able to piece together through all this craziness that from these last few years. When the sickness doesn't go away but keeps hitting and hitting and hitting, no hay nadie que te pueda salvar. there is no one that can save you. No hay pastor, no hay iglesia, no hay madre, no hay padre, no hay nada. There is no church, there is no pastor, there is no mother, there is no father, there is no one. Solo él. Only him. Solo él. Only him. Todos pueden caminar con nosotros. Many can walk with us. Pero... No entienden lo que uno vive. But they really don't understand what one is going through. Y uno lucha con el Señor, lucha, pide, dame un milagro, haz el milagro. Y la gente te dice, no tenés fe para que tengas un milagro. And you struggle with the Lord and you say, I need a miracle, I need a miracle. And people are telling you, you don't have enough faith for a miracle. Y yo digo, si tuviera en mis zapatos, a ver si te animas a decir semejante cosa. And I think if you were in my place, would you have the faith? Y no tiene que ver con la fe. And it doesn't have anything to do with faith. ¿Qué descubrí? ¿Tiene? Lo que yo descubrí fue una faceta de nuestro Señor que nunca le había puesto atención. What I discovered was a facet of our Lord that I had never seen. Porque no me ayudaba a ser famosa because it didn't help me be famous Con mi canto y todo mi with my singing and all my artistry. Yo necesitaba victoria tras victoria. I had all these stories I could tell. Y quería victorias una tras otra. And I wanted victory after victory after victory. Y tuve que crecer. And I had to grow. Y eso de mi Señor. And I discovered this about my Lord. And I'm reading out of Isaiah. Many people were shocked when they saw him. He was so disfigured that he hardly looked human. He had no dignity or beauty to make us take notice of him. 
There was nothing attractive about him, nothing that would draw us to him. Have you been walking with the Jesus is not so pretty? We always want the, the Jesus, glorify Jesus, our view, his beauty. But sometimes we have to walk with that Jesus. It doesn't look pretty like me. My face is not like it used to be now. But then I hear, I heard his voice so many times saying, I don't know what you feel, my baby. And the most beautiful miracle for me happened the day that he asked me, Leticia, do you love me more than your cancer? Do you love me more than treason? Or when people, do you love me more than them? Do you love me? And I say in my apartment, I said, you know I love you the way I can. I'm not perfect, but I love you. Is not, no quiero vivir la vida triste. I don't want to live my life in sadness. No quiero vivir la vida tratando de, de seguir perdonando y seguir perdonando y me canso. I don't want to live my life forgiving, always forgiving. I grow tired. En algún momento quiero empezar a disfrutar la vida contigo, Señor. At some point, I'd like to begin to enjoy life with you, Lord. Hermano querido. Dear brother. Hay que ser valiente para poder hacer la decisión de que la belleza de él nos sostenga en esta vida tan aturdidora. Dear brother, dear sister, one must be very brave to let the beauty of our Lord sustain us in the middle of a life that is not always pretty. Y él es real. And he is real. He is real. Él es real. He is real. Then hay una canción que me ministró mucho en los tiempos que yo estaba muy aturdida. There is a song that really has ministered to me when I was confused. Por la radiación yo perdí la saliva y todo eso en mi boca. Because of the radiation therapy I had, I've lost uh, the moistness in my mouth. Entonces yo necesito tomar agua ahora cuando canse. That's why I need a bit of water. Perdí la vista también de este ojo. I've lost sight in this eye. Pero hoy me ponía linda el, el ojo igual. But he's put life in my eye anyway. Y hoy me veía, pintaba mi ojo. And today I was putting on makeup around my eye. Le digo, tranquilo, aunque no veas, te ves lindo igual. Even though you can't see anything, you're still pretty. <laughs> I say that to my eye. So, I understood that he wants, in my brokenness, he wants to shine through it. And this is not a, uh, it takes braveness to, to embrace life as it is and and be happy and enjoy that the Lord is shining through me. So, no matter what you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Quizás lo más feo tuyo suceda, salga de esta experiencia que tenés. Maybe even in the middle of your worst experience. Uh, se puede ver la belleza de él. One can still see his beauty. Okay, in brokenness you shine. I hope I can see. It's just uh, give something from my heart to you guys. Maybe. 
Ayo sih cik. of you who didn't know, this is our Pastor William's mom, okay? And uh, next week, Saturday, will be her birthday. So she'll be leaving on Wednesday. So she won't be here for us to sing for her. So I want us all to sing for her today in advance, okay? 
So, we're going to <laughs> see up in the team. All right, church. Let's give uh, an Edmonton Baptist Church uh, blessing. Let's sing happy birthday for her. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Leticia. Sorry, took all my stuff. Like I'm moving. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If ever you didn't have faith in the healing power of God, you've seen it. Okay? You've seen it. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We bless your name. Glory be to you, O Christ. Okay. Where did I put my... Right, okay. So now I'm going to pray for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith, By the shed blood of Jesus, I come before your throne of grace, thanking you, Lord, for who you are and for the finished work of the cross of Calvary. I declare this morning that I am seated in heavenly places far above principalities and powers, and therefore I war in this realm, bringing before you, Lord God Almighty, global issues of concern to your people, Lord. Ah, Lord God Almighty, we pray that the war in Ukraine will cease in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord God Almighty, trouble spots in our world, O oh Lord, you will bring peace, for you are the Prince of Peace, Lord. I pray that where there is famine, Lord God Almighty, you will provide. I pray that where there is need, Lord God Almighty, you will provide. I pray, my Lord and my King, that you will comfort those who mourn, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let them feel your power and your love around them, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will step into the political situations, the political climates of our world. You will step into the educational, the economic climates of our world and command them to shift for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Where man's greed has brought untold hardship upon people, Lord, have mercy. Remember those in refugee camps, I pray, Lord. Oh, where it seems that all hope is lost, Lord, bring hope back into their lives uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I pray, oh Lord, that where there is unrest, Lord, your peace will reign. Be a father to the fatherless. uh, Be a husband to the widow, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Above all, I ask that your peace will reign in every corner of this world. Uh, I know that the prince of this world, yea, he's bringing all this confusion, Lord. But I know that where you are, when you step in the scene, Lord God Almighty, oh, yes, uh, the, the climate of the wicked shifts, Lord. Uh, so we shut down anything that is not of you, uh, anything that is causing confusion, uh, the greed of men, that the hearts of men will align to your will and to your grace uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. As we come closer to home, Lord, I pray and commit the UK into your hands. Lord, we are all looking eagerly to hear who has been elected. Lord, I pray that this will not be just another election of leadership, but I ask that your will will prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. And whoever you will elect, my Lord, I pray that you give them wisdom to leave this nation. 
Give them wisdom to lead this nation. Because I know when they submit to you, you, you would do it. You can do it. You have done it before, and you would do it again. So my prayer is that they will submit to you, and that your wisdom will shine through in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the queen and her household. I ask that you will bless them. Lord, those who do not know you, I pray that you will touch their hearts and their minds, that they will come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to strengthen and keep the queen in safety in the mighty name of Jesus. As we come closer to home, Lord, I commit the church of Jesus Christ worldwide into your hands. Father, the church has somehow lost its way. Bring us back on course in the name of Jesus. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bring us back on course in the name of Jesus. Uh, let the passion and the love of God be, be let it light up in our hearts, O oh Lord, uh, that we will be doers of your word and not just hearers. Lord, I ask, O oh Lord, that you will speak to your people. Touch the hearts and minds of men and women, of leaders, O oh Lord, of your church, uh, that, Lord God Almighty, your church will stand up and be counted. I pray for missionaries worldwide. Lord, I pray for the persecuted church. I ask that you will be their father. You will defend their cause where they have no one to talk for them. Some are suffering untold hardships in places we do not even know. We can't even get there. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around them. Your glory and the lifter up of their heads, Lord, that you will speak for them. When they declare your word, signs and wonders will follow in the name of Jesus, that people will know that the God of yesterday he is the same God today and forever he will be. And therefore, I bring your people, O oh God, before your throne of grace, those among our congregation who are not well. Lord, I ask that the testimony that has gone before us even now will be, oh, a healing power flowing through their bodies in the name of Jesus, from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, that we will continue to declare that the God that we serve, he is good. He has no rival and he has no equal. He is forever the God of heaven, the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for who you are. We worship you in the beauty of holiness and we bless your holy name for loving us, Lord, this high and mighty God, loving us and calling us by name. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pastor Stephen will bring us this morning's uh, Bible reading. Uh, just want to say just an amazing, wonderful privilege to be here today and to hear that wonderful testimony the sense, the presence of God here. Um, in brokenness, the light of Jesus shines. And as I was sitting there, just this uh, verse is from Corinthians. For it is not ourselves that we preach. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For the God who said, out of darkness, the light shall shine is the same God who made his light shine in our hearts to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Jesus. Yet we who have this spiritual treasure are like common clay pots in order to show that the supreme power belongs to God and not to us. What a wonderful testimony that through our brokenness, the light of Jesus can shine through. Um, thank you so much. And, Praise God. And I pray that many of you would have been moved to, to open your heart to the Lord in a new way. If you've got far away from him, it's your chance to come back. Uh, if you're broken and you feel like a pot with many cracks for whatever reason, uh, come and let the light of Jesus fill you and shine through you. Uh, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, um, today is the day. Today is the day. So don't, go, don't leave this place without talking to somebody. But most of all, talk to the Lord. Uh, invite him into your heart. Uh, to the reading for today is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. It is kept for you in heaven, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that they have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore prepare your minds for action, be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Thank you, Pastor, for the reading of the word. Uh, Let's all stand and we will sing standing on the promises of God. Amen.
Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It is good to know we have hope because we know the promises of God are true. Amen? Amen. 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 Please take your seats. Okay, so we have, uh, this is the time where I introduce uh, our preacher for the day. And uh, I'm going to go a bit further to say that this is someone I've known for quite a very long time. <laughs> uh, as far back as I was eight, you know, we grew up in the same neighborhood. And what stood out about him was his integrity and the love for the things of God. Amen? Amen. And I'm privileged to say that after 28 years of marriage to him, that has not changed. That has not changed. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. So today, it's an honor. Once again, I'm blessed, you know. It's an honor once again to introduce to you Seth, my husband. Amen. Let's welcome him with a clap. So I'll pray with him quickly before he starts. Father, I give you glory once again for your goodness and your mercies. Indeed, you are a God that keeps his promises. Lord, I commit your servant into your hands this morning. You have spoken through him and blessed many lives, Lord. And I pray that today you will speak through him so expressly, Lord, that lives will be blessed this morning. Amen. That lives will be blessed this morning. Lord, let him speak your word without fear nor favor, and let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus, once again. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'll buy you cake tonight. <laughs> it's been wonderful this morning. The presence of God is very heavy. I don't know whether you feel it, but I just feel it. The presence of God is very strong here this morning, and God is with his people. I was at Baldwin's Park Baptist Church two weeks ago with Brother Noel. I went there to preach the gospel, and I encouraged the church. I don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. It can be discouraging sometimes. Let's be focused. Hallelujah. Let's be focused. This morning we're looking at Peter. And Peter is someone that a lot of us are familiar with Peter. If I, if I ask the church now, what can you remember? What do you know about Peter? I think I'll hear one or two things. Anybody knows anything about Peter? Deny Jesus. What else? Walk on water. Jesus walked, Peter walked on water. <clears throat> Amen? We are going to look at Peter this morning. Uh, and this book is about hope in troubled times. And the testimony that Letitia gave this morning is very encouraging to encourage the church that this walk that we are walking with the Lord is not in vain. It's real. You have to experience it to understand it. And now we are looking at the book, someone who was with Jesus. He was an interesting man. Peter was an interesting man. There are a number of things that Peter did that I would like to quickly share. Peter was introduced to Jesus by his brother, Andrew. Can you believe that? That introduction to Jesus was a journey, a wonderful journey with the Lord. And I believe some of us here were introduced to Jesus, to Jesus by a family member. Anybody here that's a brother, mom, dad, uncle? Anybody? Just raise hands. Let's see. 
Thank God for the lives of those people who were bold to introduce us to Jesus. I was introduced to Jesus by my parents, but there was also another minister in the community who would gather the youngsters and teach us the Bible every afternoon. He was so kind to us, and we loved him. Why? Because we go to him and he had this tape recorder. He had recorded our names. You mention your name and it's recorded. So we always look forward to going over there to hear our names. When you press that play and you hear your name mentioned, it was so good. Six year old, listening to your name and then listening to the gospel. In, first, in John 1 40 to 42, it says that one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated stone. So, let's also introduce someone to Jesus. Amen? Let's make every effort to introduce someone to Jesus. Peter sometimes acts on impulse. And we can relate to Peter in so many ways. One, he was a fisherman by profession. There was one night he went fishing, did not get anything. The next day, Jesus came over and asked him to launch into the deep. And he said, look, I have toiled all night and did not catch anything. Nevertheless, at your word. He obeyed the word of the Lord, launched into the deep, and he caught a lot of fish. He was a businessman. He walked on water, as he said, our William's dad. What's your name, please? Stanley. Stanley, that's Stanley said. <laughs> he walked on water. There was a time that he went to Jesus. How many times do I forgive someone who offends me? So you see Peter. Peter was always asking me questions. And he told Jesus seven times. The Lord said no. 70 times 7. In other words, Peter, unlimited. Unlimited. But this day and age, what I see with believers is that we are not saying how many times we want to forgive, but we are saying that how long, Lord, can I keep this unforgiveness? One year, two years, three years, five years, ten years, twenty years. Now, that is what believers do. So you give the Lord a time. I'm going to be upset with this person for five years, 10 years, 20 years before I deal with it. Obey the Lord. The Lord says forgive and let's believe that. Let's hold on to his word and forgive. Peter was the one who asked Jesus after the encounter with the rich young ruler, what the disciples would receive after giving everything up for follow Jesus. In other words, Peter asked Jesus, Jesus, I've been following you. Listen. I need to feed my family. What is in this for me? Now, many of us have been Christians. If I ask, what is in this Christianity? That you come to church, you sing, you stand, you sit, you sing, you stand, you sit, you say amen, you say hallelujah. What is in this? Eternal life. Hallelujah. Eternal life. There is something in it. Peter was the one who insisted that Jesus would not wash his feet. Then he commanded Jesus to wash his whole body. He rebuked Jesus, he rebuked Jesus for saying that he was going to Jerusalem to die. Jesus rebuked him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Herod imprisoned Peter. The Bible says that he pleased the people. He was about to die. But somehow, suddenly, the Lord sent an angel. And the prison doors were opened. I pray that there will be a suddenly in your life. No matter what you're going through, no matter the challenge, no matter the pain, I pray that there will be a suddenly. Hallelujah. Suddenly, God sent an angel. And Peter was released. Then one day, 
Jesus asks the disciples a very important question. And this question is to everyone here. And for those watching online, Jesus asks the disciples, who do people say that I am? I have healed the sick. I have cried. I went to Lazarus to me, cried. I have worked miracles. I have done this, I have done that. Who do people say that I am? Well, the place was quiet, and Peter, same Peter, spoke and said, you are Jesus, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, ah, Peter, you did not know this answer. My father revealed this to you. When you look at this scripture here, it involved the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus asked the disciples, and God didn't want them to come up with an answer. People are saying all sorts of things about the Jesus that we serve. He is this, he is that, he was a good man, he is this and that. So many people have their view about Jesus. Soon it will be Christmas, a few months to come, it will be Christmas. And they love to see the baby, Christ, baby, baby boy, Christmas time, to hold the baby. People love babies. But they don't want to see the man, Jesus. Soon, Christmas will be coming, they will talk about this baby. Now, Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And God said, Jesus said, my father revealed this to you. So look at this. Je Jesus asked a question. The father gave the answer. And the answer came to Peter by his spirit. And Peter opened his mouth and said he's the son of the living God. This question I'm asking everyone here this morning. And for those watching online, is Jesus your savior? He is the living God. In other words, he lives forever. Everything you see in this world have God and expired days. That new car that you wash it every day, twice a day, the new car, a time will come that car will end up in the scrap yard, whether you like it or not. Preserve it. Now, when you look at the scrap yard and you see the old cars, these were cars that people bought it and they, they spent their time looking after the car and enjoying their car. There was a lady here in this church, she's no longer here. She bought a new car. And according to her, every time she goes to bed and she, hear, she hears any sound outside, she runs out and opens the door to check if anything, everything is all right. And this went on and on and on. And uh, her daughter said, Mommy, you were better off when you had the old car. We have peace. But now you hear any little thing, then you run out. What is going on? But you know what? That car will one day end up more in the scrapyard. Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Peter was the one that cut off the right eye of the servant, Marcus. Peter denied Jesus three times, cursing and swearing that he did not even know the man. Now listen to this. Peter referred to Jesus here as the man. When they asked him, do you know Jesus? He did not even say that, no, Jesus said, I don't know the man. So now, this is why I'm saying that we can relate to Peter in so many ways. There have been times that we have denied the Lord. There have been times that we have let the Lord down. There have been times that they've asked you, are you a Christian? Then you look back and check. Yeah, I'm one of them, yeah, I'm a Christian. There have been times that Things have happened in our life that we feel, oh, I think that's it. That's the end. No. The Lord, in spite of all this, the Lord Jesus restored Peter and gave Peter hope. And you know what? Finally, just to let you know when I study this, I have come to know that Jesus interacted with Peter more than anyone in the four Gospels. Go home and go and do your homework. That's your takeaway today. Those of you that love takeaway, 
I'm giving you a takeaway. And the takeaway is go home and go and check. Jesus interacted with Peter more than anyone in the four Gospels. Now Peter writes to the church in 1 Peter. Better be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us. Peter wrote to a church, a community. Peter wrote to believers who, were, who had been dispersed. If you look at verse 1 to 2, these were believers who had been dispersed because of persecution. And he called them pilgrims. Peter was encouraging the church that no matter what you go through now, there is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope. No matter what you go through, there is hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercies has begotten us, according again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, we have hope because Jesus has been raised from the dead. That is the hope that we have. If he was not raised, there would be no hope. We know what happened in Jerusalem when he was crucified on the way to Amos. How those believers were so discouraged and Jesus appeared to them. They did not know. Until they went to him and broke bread and saw Jesus. Then he vanished from their sight. It, it was like they had lost all hope that Jesus that we believe would do this for us is dead. Is dead. But no. Jesus lives and he lives forever. Amen? How did I know that he lives? Some of us spoke to him earlier this morning. Some of us are even talking to him right now. Some of us just said, hello. And whilst our sister Leticia was giving her testimony, she was connecting with Jesus. What Jesus, the Jesus that lives in her, has done for her. He walks with me and talks with me. A long life, narrow way. Don't be a narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives with it, my heart. That is why they can take the Bible away from you. They can imprison you. They can tell you, don't serve this God again. But you know that you have him here. Hallelujah. He lives in your heart. David said, your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. He has banked the word. He's got a bank. Bank of the Bible. He has banked it there. And every now and then he will go and he will withdraw. He will go and he withdraws. What am I trying to say? What I'm saying is study the word. Feed on the word. Hallelujah. Feed on the word. So that when those challenging times come that you can't even read the Bible, you will be able to pick on that which is here and feed on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God has given us an inheritance, Peter says. Inheritance that is even more better than gold. Gold is precious. Gold is refined by, with fire and is tested. What God has prepared for us is greater and better than the gold that has been refined. We as children of God have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. Hallelujah. Say with me that I have an inheritance. Some of you did not say. You see, this is what's going on. The enemy will come in to try to feed your mind with all sorts of junk and lies. And that which is yours, sometimes you are not sure. But let's say it again boldly that I have an inheritance. You have an inheritance in the Lord. This is how far we have come. So Peter was encouraging the church that, look, 
I left my business and I followed the Lord, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Amen? You have an inheritance. First Corinthians 2, 9 declares that, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard. Hallelujah. Nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. The psalmist declares in Psalm 66, verse 10 to 12, for you, O God, have tested us. Can you imagine? For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire. She went through fire. We went through water. But you brought us out to reach fulfillment. What a mighty God we said. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. <laughs> ah. This is all about Jesus. James says, count it joy. Count it joy. When the affliction comes, sometimes when the affliction comes, it's like that is the end of you. When the affliction comes, and affliction comes in so many forms. I have been in this church and I've seen people that have gone through challenging times. And I've stood the test of time and I've still worshipped the Lord. We had a sister who had gone to be with the Lord. We were here and she lost her husband. Then she lost her son. And she lost her sister. Three. Yet she served the Lord. And she served the Lord faithfully. The afflictions will come in different forms. We don't ask God for, for the date. We don't ask God how we want it. So some is declare that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters. You are walking through that valley. You are not staying there. You are walking even though I walk. I walk. I walk. You are walking. You are walking through that valley. You are walking. In other words, you are coming out. Some of you are in the valley right now. Don't worry. Jesus is with you. Some of us are being prepared to go to the valley. And some are coming out now. God has got a timetable. He knows best. Let's trust our God. He knows best. God is faithful. In verse 6 he says that, In this greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness, the faith has to be tested. Your faith will be tested. That the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, you still love him. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice, with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. There is something for us. Hallelujah. Peter is saying in that in this we should greatly rejoice. This is where the problem is. How do I go through these challenging times and rejoice? How does that work out? Let's hold on to the word. James says that count it joy. Let's rejoice. Because the Lord knows what is at the other end. Amen? This morning, if there's anyone here going through challenging times, first of all, I pray for your family. I pray that the Lord will strengthen them. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord will touch your mind. The Lord will strengthen you by the power of his spirit. Because he knows best. He knows, but hallelujah. What God has prepared for us, the salvation that he has given us free because of his abundant mercy. Prophets of old, many desired to see this. They prophesied about things that they did not understand. Even angels desired, according to the Bible, they wanted to know what this salvation is about. Messiah will come, he will die, he will be resurrected, and... Salvation will be given to people. 
They desire to look into this. And even though they did not see it, child of God, New Testament believer, you are in a privileged position. You are in a better dispensation because one, you have the Bible. Two, you are able to see what is in there. Hallelujah. You are able to know what is in there. So, child of God, don't take this for granted, but rather hold on to God's word and believe his word because God is faithful. But it tells them, it tells the church, that's including at Mountain Baptist, for all those listening online, wherever you are in the world. Scripture here is saying in verse 13 that, therefore, in the King James it says that, therefore, get up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus. This morning I hid this from my wife. I didn't want her to see it. And I asked me, what are you going to do? What is this for? So rather, I kept quiet and I hid it in the car. There are certain things you have to learn to be quiet. Now here we are. You see the problems? Wait. accept anything. You heard our sister Leticia saying that. Some were talking and saying that you had no faith. And now this is, this, this, sometimes this, you hear these things and it's very sad. And these are from believers. These are from Christians. I have four daughters. Here in this church some time ago, when I had the youngest one, an elderly lady calls me and said, Sir, you have four girls. You wait until they are 18. They will give you problems. They will give you problems. It's not going to happen. I, I rejected it. You just reject those words from the evil one. Somebody that tells you that you have no faith. So, now, they are all, all my children are all over 18. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. That which was spoken did not come to pass. The devil is a liar. Get out the lines of your mind. Don't allow anything, just anything to get into your mind. There's a sister here who some time ago was not well. And he felt he could hear this voice saying to her that Jesus doesn't love you anymore. And that became, that became a problem. She thought about it and really affected her. Until she went to the word that says that I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
When you are going through challenging times, you will hear many voices. Be careful. You hear these days that the church of Christ is going down. Churches are closing down. People are not worshiping God. Don't you believe that? God said in his word that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Get up the ruins of your mind. In other words, don't just let anything. There are certain things you have to just cut them off. Cut them off. Cut certain things off. Because the mind is a battlefield. I don't know what's on your mind now. Maybe your mind is under pressure. All sorts of things are coming. You can watch something on the television set and it will affect your mind. We say that God is in control. But I want to tell you that God is not in control of your mind. You are in control of your mind. It depends on what you are going to allow to come here. It depends on what you are going to allow to stay here. God is watching you. When you are somewhere watching certain things on your phone, is, God, is it God that is watching it? When you are listening to certain things, that you know that this is ungodly. Is it God that is listening? So even though he's in control, he gives you that free will. So child of God, if you want God to be in control of your mind, then what you have to do is you have to surrender. You surrender your mind. In other words, your will. Whatever that will go into your mind, check it, check it out. Check some balances. Is this according to the word of God? Is this godly? Should I allow this? Because the church of Jesus Christ now, so many things were said about the church of Jesus Christ, so much so that Peter encouraged the church that church stands strong. Church don't allow this. So many people are going on with lies and they'll confuse you. There are certain programs you watch you after, after watching the program, you go, oh, I don't know. I can't sleep. You can't sleep. Why did you watch it? Anything you see there, that appears there, you think it's you. This is you, you, you. You see somebody there say, oh dear, I'm going to be like this person. Oh dear, Lord, I'm in trouble. Then you can't eat. The attack that comes against the mind is a serious attack because it's a battlefield. So whatever that is going through your mind right now, if it's not godly, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the Lord will take it away. The Bible declares that for God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of power, of love, and sound mind. So get out the loins. Get out the loins. Get out the lens. Cut the loose ends. Cut the loose lens. Thoughts that run wild. Make that thought obedient to Christ. Don't allow any, just anything to be in the mind. God is faithful. I remember one sister shared with my wife. She was told in school that you will amount to nothing. Teacher told the young girl. And this young girl grew up, went to uni, finished, and became a head teacher. Became a head teacher. Someone spoke into her life. And if she had allowed that, she had incubated it there, it would be, it would be there. And she always be saying to herself that this is what they are saying. This is what I've been told. I've, I've been told that I will amount to. So for that reason, this is what is going to happen to me. Child of God, the Bible says that for we have the mind of Christ. In other words, let's think like Christ. If there's anything going on now that is not of God, let it come out. It's causing you pain. It's causing pressure. It's causing all sorts of challenges in your life. Some of us are not sleeping well because of what is here. Some of us are not eating well because of what is here. Some of us are not relating to people very well because of what is here. Cut it out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One day, one day, one day, we're going to be with the Lord. There are so many things that we don't understand. No wonder the hymn writer wrote, by and by, uh, uh, mm, mm, mm. when the saints of God are gathered home, they tell the story 
how we overcome. He will understand it better by and by. One day, we will understand it. Jesus asks a very important question asked that earlier on. Who do people say that I am? Interestingly enough, the answer is in the question. Who do people say that I am? The I am. We did I am series here in this church. Come know if you can remember. Don't forget what you learned here. Don't just come to church. You listen to it. You go out and that's it. The I am series here. Who do people say that I am? You see the answer there. The I am. I am. The I am. Jesus, the son of the living God. The question I want to ask you finally is that, is Jesus your savior? There is hope prepared for those that follow him. We have an inheritance. If you want to have an inheritance, you've got to surrender your life to Jesus. The world has nothing to offer. There is nothing out there. Everything, everything that the world will offer will not help you. Jesus will help you. Jesus will help you. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. There are things that you don't understand. Oh, you say, Lord Jesus, I don't understand. Lord, help me. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. That is the mighty God that we serve. I remember some few weeks back when my daughter called me and said, look, I'm in Manchester and I can't get a train home. It was getting to midnight. I said, book into a hotel. There was a concert in town, so all hotels have been booked. After midnight, they have been there alone. So should I drive from here to Manchester around that time? So all I did was that I spoke. I spoke to the one out there. I said, Lord, you got to help us in this situation. So when I phoned him up, he answered, and somehow, she was able to call one of her friends that live in the very city. So when her mother heard that she was there around that time, the mother quickly drove in and picked her up. What a mighty God we serve. What a faithful God we serve. Some of us are going through affliction, but I just want to tell you finally that the Lord has not forgotten you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will manifest your glory, your power in the lives of your children. Peter encourages us that there is hope. I pray, Lord, that anyone going through affliction, Lord, Father, strengthen them, strengthen them by the power of your spirit, Lord. You are a faithful God, and we know that you are able to do all things. You do all things well. I ask, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, you stretch forth your mighty hand. Your hand that is mighty to save, mighty to deliver, mighty to strengthen, mighty to turn things around. And Father, do a new thing in the lives of your children. Remember mercy, because you're a merciful God. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. For that wonderful word of God. Amen. Amen. Have we been blessed? Yes. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We will stand and sing our final song in Christ alone. Let's all stand, please.
praise you, Lord. As we bring this morning's service to a close, I would like to read Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. God promises us again, perfect peace is yours as long as you trust in him. Steadfast, firm, unwavering. We've heard it through the service, the sermon. We've heard it through the testimony and the song by Leticia. Be steadfast, unwavering, firm in your love and in your trust for God. Amen? And he will honor his word. He will keep you in perfect peace. It does not matter what you go through. In the midst of the circumstances, you will have perfect peace. That is the promise of God to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's been lovely uh, meeting once again and worshiping God together. And I trust that the Lord has spoken to your heart this morning. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for being with us and for finishing with us, Lord. I give you glory and I give you praise. I thank you because your word is true and whatever you have said will come to pass. Lord, this week, be with your people. Surround us with your goodness. Help us to love you more. Help us that our love in you will continue to be firm and strong. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray once again for our children going back to university, to colleges, Lord. I pray that you will go before them. Lord, be their guardian and their guide. Father, entrust your angels before them. Let them keep them in all their ways. Protect their minds, protect their hearts in you, Lord, and bless them above all things. Let your word be hidden in their hearts, that nothing will be able to take it out, that they will continue to look up to you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We give you glory once again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. God bless you and have a blessed week. Amen. You are the word at the beginning. From his